What the is up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Beers and. Today, we're going to be talking about beers and bling, 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 mother, bling. mother fears. Because what better hosts to talk about bling than Nick and Alex? Than than the two of us, the the drippiest mfers this side of the Mason Dixon. We are going to tell you all about bling. Quite now. All about, all about, <laughs> quite white. Quite white. Yeah. And we're also going to tell you about the beer we're having today. We're having another 450 Norther. <laughs> Ta da! Sour Worms. So this is actually just, they they just did a goat release. Like the, I guess, like greatest their, their greatest cans okay. of all time. No, you're spot on. Okay. And they did sour worms, but they dropped it. It's called gold dipped sour Ooh. worms. So we don't have the gold dip. We don't have the goat. Release. That would have been a good one for bling too. That, I know. That's all right. We got the closest thing we can get. So this is a sour beer. It I'm is excited. made with um, peach, raspberry, passion fruit, and lime. Ooh. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah. There's no, uh, no sour candy in this one. All right. That's okay. If you want to tell us uh, what, you, uh, what you're liking, what you don't like. Or just just tell us anything. Tell us where to go. You know, whatever. Uh, beers and podcast at gmail dot com. Come beers, on over. Beers and podcast on Instagram at beers and one on Twitter and beers and podcast on the old YouTube as well as and on the TikTok. 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 Come check us out on TikTok if you don't get to see the full episodes. It's a good spot to uh, to to find the funny stuff. To find the good stuff. Yeah, we think, yeah. We think we're highlighting some of the the. There's some behind the scenes action up oh, there now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You should go check out. Cheeky Alex. Do you you know I made a mistake? It's uh tart cherry, lime, peach, and passion fruit. You oh, God. I know. We're trying right. to run a legitimate operation you're, you're here. Right. You're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, while we while we do that legitimately, you already introduced the socials, so what are we gonna get into? Question of the day. Question of the day. We're sticking with the topic. I just want to really know quickly what's your favorite precious metal? Ooh, do my you have a preference? Favorite precious metal. I do like silver quite a bit. Sterling silver? Yeah. Sterling I archer. I do like sterling silver yeah, quite that, a bit. That's a classic. I really don't wear a lot of gold. I, the interesting thing is that right now I don't have any of my rings on me. Um, yeah. But I don't. Um, just the, uh, the chain. Just my chain. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but I don't. Yeah. I don't wear a lot of gold by any means. Yeah. So I, mean, I try either. to match with silver. Well, I can't wear a lot of metal because I'm. A, allergic oh are you to some degree to it's actually to belts oh definitely to silver um white gold i'm okay with and there's one more that oh. i'm missing see yeah. you you can shower me in all the precious metals you want oh no i'll I'm, be in I'm, pain i'm good on that one well, you'll be in pain too if you get showered with metal I'm listen I, that is a small price to pay Small. For the wealth, for the wealth that you'll gain being yeah. showered in metal exactly right. small price to pay right yeah but i do i prefer Silver, the gold, yeah, the gold was was. Figured the chain was a gift from when I was born. Okay. So the chain is is Italian. A born day gift. A born day gift, uh, and then the pendant was my grandfather's uh, after he had uh, passed away. Okay. He had a long, long gold chain, and it came down to like halfway Wait, down really? like my sternum, and I was like, "This looks stupid." I love that. Um, so I, I replaced that, but yeah, that's the only gold. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's all all sterling all silver. silver. Yep. Okay. I'm a... Or, I, or white gold. I do have the. I like white gold. I've got the my my thumb ring is uh is white gold. I would pick white gold over regular. Yeah, gold. I just I I don't think it. It also Regal doesn't match. I think a lot with what I wear particularly. And that and that's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a and big, the blue uh, eyes. Factor. It's silver looks better with. Oh, for sure. How do you feel about rose gold? Ooh, I do like a good rose yeah, gold. That's nice. yeah. yeah, that's, that's Christina's a, favorite. That's a nice one. Yeah. Ooh, I like that too. Although I do, I am a sucker for a good, like precious stone. Oh, for sure. I so my my ring that I usually wear, um, Gucci. Um, it had an option of having a black diamond or a black pearl in its mouth and I opted against it. Oh. And fuck. I am like immediately regretted it. And I was like, oh, I would have loved yeah. to have that because, you know, I'm gaudy, I the guess. The black pearl. That's yeah. I love that. That's idea. a cool one. I'm very ostentatious of you. 
Thank you. Not the first time we're going to be using that word today. Not at all. I'm a big platinum guy. Yeah. Or titanium. Ooh. I like them both. Um, but I, but if I can get them in black, I would prefer. I don't know if black platinum is a thing, but it should be. Black onyx, I believe. Black it is. onyx is the thing, and I do like that. What is your wedding band going to be? Uh, or, have, or what is it? Because so this I have is coming out on Friday, technically. So I got two. Oh, you have two. I got two. Is that um, a thing? For me, it is. They were cheap, so I got two. <laughs> I doubled up. Just they're case. actually they're actually very nice. Uh, one when of you them go to I Costco, can, one of them I could definitely pull up for you. Ooh. Um, so one is uh, is it black zirconium, or I think it is. So that's you could one pull of off one of those. It's a black finish yeah. on the outside with the gold on the inside. Oh, I like that. Right? Isn't that nice? Oh, with the gold on the inside, it's a nice touch. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice little... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you might not know, but I do, and that's what matters. And then the other one, I don't recall the name of, but it is... Um, I think that one is titanium. Oh. And it's all, all silver, you know, all titanium. And then right in the front of the ring are two like laser etched grooves that go all the way around. Ooh, but nice. they're but they're offset. They're not um, See, symmetrical. You've got better fingers. I've got the fat Do I? I've got chubbier fingers that I uh that I need to I don't know if I've I have i have never worn a ring really. Once you do, It'd you start to be like like a good ring. That's what I'm at at this point. Yeah, I, I feel like there was a, a um I saw it after. Oh, actually it's cl- it's kind of close to this one. Oh, but it, but it's got two it's got two cuts in oh, it and I they like go that. all the way around. Yeah, okay. it's, it's very nice. There's one like this that's green and purple, Ooh. but it's Joker themed. Oh, uh, yeah, probably yeah. not the greatest. Uh, no, I wasn't going to get away with that love. one. No, 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 no. 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 I wasn't going to get away with that one. Oh. I have a question for. Or let's let's sip this I'm, first. I'm and ready for the question. Then, but this smells like this is like viscous. all sorts of deliciousness. Mm. Oh. Wow. It's it's a gummy worm. That yeah. There's really no question yeah, about you're, that. You're right. It's a gummy worm. You're, you're absolutely right. I don't Ooh. know if I like the sour very much at the end though. The lime and the tart cherry. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's something it reminds me of a lime Ricky. And I like those. I like a lime like Ricky, those. but I feel like I've got more control over the lime to cherry mm-hmm. ratio and not having it here. I'm getting a real kind of And it's tart cherry. It's yeah. not just regular, like, you know, sweet dark. It's tart cherry and the lime. Right in the middle portion of my tongue oh, is yeah. kind of where I'm not A little bit of a tingly kind of. Yeah. I, see, I like that. Oh, I don't know. I really like the lime. Like, even though it's very clearly artificial. Yeah. At least it feels that way. I like the lime I, flavor in this. I do genuinely enjoy that usually, but Ooh. for some reason it's not it's not working for me entirely. I don't know. I am impressed. Again, I'll give 450 North credit where credit is due in that they consistently manage to make a beer that tastes like you would expect it oh, to. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. This is pretty cool that it is very much. It is gummy worms. I can't tell the last time I've had a like gummy a, worm oh, yeah. either. But like, I actually hate gummy worms. I feel like of all gummy treats, they're the toughest. Why? They're always the hardest to chew through like physically the toughest i think it's because we usually have them when they're served in dirt cups or mud cups so it's been no sitting. See, i don't eat those really yeah i don't oh, I'm not I a love big, a good I'm mud not a cup. dirt no 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 oh i love no. that love a good I'd chocolate go pudding. real do real dirt Re- <laughs> really all right <laughs> i think so interesting Learn something new every day. Hey, you know, dirt's, I mean, dirt, real dirt's probably good for you. I mean, it's There's high in of, iron. Yeah, lots of silica. I was just and... listening to a podcast where Catherine the Great, I believe, had done that. Ate dirt? Yeah, when she was pregnant. Oh. That's a thing. And Oh, uh, okay. I guess. Some more water births, but I can't convince my fiance to have one. Well, because she's not pregnant, so <laughs> that would be weird. You, if think, you, you think that's why? <laughs> I don't you... know why we keep having a discussion about the way I'm going to give birth. I'm not pregnant. Also... Do I want to know this? Also, but why? Words. This Water is a very words? interesting episode because we've started off with discussing jewelry and <laughs> now we're going into... Everywhere. We're now getting into the pros and cons of the water birth. Why water birth? Yeah. Um, I read somewhere, I actually did some extensive reading, believe it or not, on sometimes they're done with dolphins and apparently dolphins... A dolphin uh, as a midwife does during, not sound safe. During the birth, like they release sonar into the water and like soothe the mother. Yeah. I can guarantee. I can read picture. Up on I can picture you. your 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 
her just wife not, to her be just not sued. or depending upon what time you're listening to this your current wife i can or you or your now wife i can picture her going okay okay i'll think about it and walking away from yeah, you okay. just thinking absolutely fucking when you go ahead and and, and thrust I'm, life from your body i'm like dolphins it could be pain-free she's like just give me the drugs it's fine <laughs> it's okay if that's not a sign of stop this, my body the day that the blessing doth come forward, <laughs> right. if you even remotely just suggest something other than an epidural for your wife, just remember this conversation. I will. <laughs> Never forget him. So, yeah. Oh, God. I don't know how we got there. But. I don't know either, actually. Interestingly enough, but... Uh, My cheeks hurt from the beer and from oh, laughing. Oh, boy. That's a good one. Oh, okay. I, I get the peach. It's interestingly like intertwined with the passion fruit. Yeah. And brings on like a really, I like that flavor. Peach and passion fruit. I would have never guessed that. I feel like this is the second one. And I don't, it might be the second slushy XL from 450 North where there is something that's lingering that I'm not enjoying. Okay. And I think it might've been from the genominant fruit. Isn't that what it is? Sour sop. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's one. The first time. What's the what's Guanabinot. it called? Guanabinot. I was do, close. Do, do, do. Yeah, you were really close. Um, but I know how that one lingered, and I didn't enjoy. Yeah, you weren't a fan it. of that. And I'm, I feel like the same sort of thing is happening now. So, there was was there passion fruit in that one? No, that was all due to. There was the definitely peach though. Sour sop. There yeah, was peach in that one. Maybe it's the peach. Maybe because I like peaches, but I'm, I don't know. There's something maybe with with the idea of a, a lime peach and cherry that's not working okay. real well for me. I don't know. Okay, I'm digging it. I um, mean, I, I like it better than the the, the, than sour the previous sop. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was, I will admit, very muddled. Like uh, flavor wise, it was yeah. very confusing. I do like this one. Um, Probably not as high on other as as other 450 North ones that we've had. Okay, but I'm gonna give this one a, like a solid 4.15. Oh, all right. I'm gonna go like a um, three six five. I wonder what it is. I'm curious. I don't know. I'm I'm because I'm, I'm really digging like the the lime ricky. I feel like I want to start or the next slushy esque sour. I think I'd like to see or maybe try one other than from a 450 North. And I'm wondering okay. if that might be you know when you're when you're Oh God! I was gonna actually make reference to shampoo for a second, and I'm sorry. Um, every, I'm sorry. You can't make a shampoo I, reference with me. I mean, I, you're right. So every once in a while, you've got to like change up the shampoo that you okay. use because your hair gets used to it. So, okay. So funny. Sorry. <laughs> oh. So we had, uh, sorry, we had the um, the thick thrills. Yeah. That was a was that a slushy sour? It was not. It wasn't. I feel like I had a slushy sour not um, from 450 North recently. I thought that was it. Maybe it's not. I'll have to go back and check the notes. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. I'm still going to go 365. You know, it's hard. Nowhere, nobody else really does that style. That is true. You know, that it's, is it's true. mostly, oh, uh, Drecker. Oh, right. If we can right. find a Drecker one, Drecker Maybe doesn't. the Drecker was the, the we sour had a, sop. We had a, no, no, that was uh, 450. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was 450. A tight mechanism oh yeah running here just just on all cylinder you know what it is is that we put so much new information into our brains every new episode that we just like the things that we don't remember go away exactly so you know gotta make sure that these things stick out right i remembered some of the important stuff the booze is the booze is the booze i remember a lot of the unimportant stuff i think i do too yeah like catherine great eating or catherine the great eating dirt during her pregnancy right which has not been tested uh or checked for validity yet but um i'm pretty sure it's true yeah i'm just gonna go with it because that's you know that's what they did (laughs) three six five yeah i like three sticking with it yeah okay do you mind if i kick us off Uh, please do all right so bling do you bling, bling. quickly? What? Do you use the term bling? Maybe four times in my entire life. Okay, good. And three of those times were to be cheeky. Okay, I will accept that. Yeah. Okay. That's. I feel like that's I would good. say that I'm roughly about the same. Okay, perfect. So <laughs> bling or the original, as we forget, bling 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 bling, officially appeared in the Oxford Dictionary in 2003, and then subsequently the Merriam-Webster in 2006. Oh my god. So from Merriam-Webster. Bling means flashy jewelry, 
worn especially as an indication of wealth or status, or more broadly, expensive and ostentatious possessions. Ooh. Right? Fancy. I like that. There has been much speculation as to where this term originated, and honestly, the story is not as cut and dry as I would like. There, there was a lot of like, it could have been this, or we heard it here, yeah. and, and it, you know, like, people attribute it to this guy. Well, people attribute it to rapper Baby Gangsta, or BG as he's affectionately known. Of course. Right. He's most friend of the friend of the show. Right. G- great friend of the show. Be good old BG. Um, it's likely correlated with it's most likely correlated with him, the phrase. Mm-hmm. Because in nineteen ninety nine he released the song Bling Bling. I would love to read the lyrics to you guys, but they're hard. Oh, okay. And, and I will not read them on the show. Okay. <laughs> Especially since like four words in, I'm pretty sure it's ho. Oh. Yeah. All four right. or five words in. So they, they made it real far before uh I like how message across. now we're cutting off at what is our limit. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. You know, we have some eloquence around here and a little we, bit. we will not stoop below our line. That's right, hose. That's right. <laughs> We've got some class up in this place. Well, with that being said. <laughs> it's 3.65, just went up to a 3.72. <laughs> there were also, you know, like in... Um, old timey cartoons or shows like that sound is very bling bling or like a sparkle sound yeah. you know to it's meant to like denote something desirable or shiny yeah so like we've heard this everywhere pretty much but no one really knows right we only know it, it is right so i broke it down even more like phonetically if you if you take the word bling yeah and just like change up your octaves you have bling bling Oh, I it like kind, that. It kind of says itself. I think right. that's probably where it came from. You know, like it was just created out of its own like sound and Yeah, like if someone thinks like what sound is shimmer or what sound Bling. is yeah, yeah like and, luminous. Yep. You know, and yeah. it's either a B or Bling. a P in front of it. Right, exactly. Right. And a P makes a ploistering on the microphone. So it, the B is so better. We're sticking with the B. Yeah. Good bird, by the way. That's that's right. So obviously very well known sound. Yeah. We've heard this is here are some fun places where you may have heard it in the mid to late 60s toothpaste maker ultra bright ran a commercial you know i i do familiar? did you do you have it ran a commercial that stated ultra bright gives your mouth ting sex appeal suggesting fresh breath and a brilliant smile did you do you have the video up i don't at all? No. would you like to see oh, it sure because i most definitely look this up because i was fascinated yeah. by it Oh my God! Uh, yes, are they still around? Ultra Bright? Um, they might be. I'm not a robot, Google. Um, they might be. Oh, this is the one from. This is from 1969. Um, I'll, I'll I'll superimpose this uh, a little bit later on for us. So, I'm excited. Oh yeah, I remember this. Ultra Bright toothpaste, taste you can really feel. There's the bling. There it is. Smile is a healthy smile because regular brushing with Ultra Bright means the freshest. Oh my good lord! Look at these moderate to high attractive. The best sixties kids. The best part is I was just gonna say they're supposed to be like teenagers when they look well into their thirties. I also just want to take a moment and say that uh, for a generation that came about. Um, when commercials were advertising toothpaste with the tagline, the sex appeal toothpaste, y'all sure tightened the fuck up in the past couple of years about a lot of different things. Touche, cancel culture, touche. <laughs> Once you go back to the 60s where everyone was not PC. Yeah, right? Sock it to me. Do you know the um, instrument that is typically used to make the bling sound I on think, TV audio and... I mean, I thought I had seen it's, it. It's a very foreign instrument. It. I think I had seen. Is it yeah. the Is it the glockenspiel? Yep. Okay. In in fact, it is the glockenspiel. They use it um, to make the bling sound for like audio or like a sound over or anything. Which is crazy because like I can't... No, I can't hear that. I can't either. Nope. I, I have no idea. Because I think of the glockenspiel... If you go back and you check out our last episode, uh, Time Pieces, 
Uh, I almost brought up the glockenspiel because that's a bit, well, it's a big clock in the middle oh, of like yeah, Munich and whatnot. Wow. But for some reason, I can't think of the actual instrument itself. The glockenspiel. The glockenspiel. Um, God, there is nothing sexy about that uh, language. You're, you're absolutely right. So one of the first uses of bling explicitly referring to ostentatious jewelry was on the TV show Martin. Martin Lawrence, he played the role oh, of God, someone called right. Jerome, and he sported a family heirloom, gold toofs in his mouth. Uh, but in addition to this, he also had other jewelry that apparently mirrored like pimps of the time. Mm. So he walked around like in full pimp garb pretty much. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, he's got a strut. I just always, oh. I just always picture Snoop from uh, what's the movie where he's a pimp? Come on. Oh, Starsky and Hutch. Yes. When he played uh, yes. uh, always Pookie. Picture- what was it? Uh, Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always yeah. picture Snoop. Oh, so, it was, so it was in Martin's. Martin. I never watched that show. Um, but I like Martin Lawrence. I'm not going to lie. It was a funny show from what I was remember. It? Yeah. He was on at that same time as like um, Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Oh, really? And yeah, it was an oh, so early, it was like 80s. an early, ni- uh, early 90s, early 90s? mid 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then my last, last little bit right here. Do you know who Jesse West is? You may, you may know him by his stage name, Third Eye. I don't, I don't. I, I know Third Eye Blind. Nope, not that. Okay, not, no, that's what I thought it was. Okay, no, uh, Third Eye's a rapper, um, and Bling Bling was used. This is potentially the first time it's been used in music. 1993, it was on the Bad Boys extended mix to Super Cats hit Dolly My Baby. Classic, classic, classic. Who doesn't know? Dolly I believe my baby? that's 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 what you're walking into. I think actually during your first dance, that, that is mistaken. that is in fact my uh, my wedding walk up song, <laughs> and it goes a little something like this: <laughs> Bling bling, dollar baby. So Look yeah. at them rocks, you hoes. <laughs> it's supposed to be classy. Remember, it's I'm sorry. To be. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's early still. So yeah, so a little bit of history about the word bling. I appreciate just a little bit, that. Just a little bit. I appreciate that one. Um, so I went into, I was trying to think of different pieces of bling. And mm. I know that you and I had chatted a little bit about, um, you know, what you were going to be looking into. And I was like, oh man, like what else do I really like look into in terms of bling? Um, so, and I forgot that this was technically considered to be a piece of bling. Um, and if I never say the word bling again, it'll be too soon. But the Jesus piece, it is formerly referred to as the Jesus piece. It's a, you know, the giant sort oh, yeah. of, uh, uh, crucifix, uh, it's, or, it's or, the, usually, or the head. It's usually more of the head. The head of Christ. Yep. The head of, yeah. Christ's head. Christ's head. Christ head. Yeah. Christ's head. Christ's head. Um, so it's been worn by a multitude of rappers and hip hop artists, uh, Notorious B.I.G., Jay-Z, Kanye West, Kendrick Lamar. And Kanye. Neil. Oh, yes. My dog. So according to a 2018 write-up from the Boombox and a 2017 piece from High Snobiety, which I think is a great name for a High public. Snobiety, I yeah, love that. I think it's genius. Uh, the Both of them claim, you know, in so many words, that the Jesus piece has become one of the most iconic pieces of hip-hop jewelry and the most pro- uh, popular pendant of all time. Definitely. Which I would agree. Yeah. So the Notorious B.I.G., uh, he had his pieces created by Tito Casado and subsequently paid $10,000 per piece to give to those who worked for him. So wow. he's, this was like a, a gift. Now, I don't also know if that number um, is in like 90s money or if it's been updated. So Sure. When he died, the piece had gone to his son and his son gives it to Jay-Z who wears the piece every time he records a new album. That's cool. Uh, and he had claimed, quote, it's part of my rit- uh, ritual whenever I record an album. That's really so cool. So I think that is really cool. Anytime you hear a new Jay-Z album, he's new wearing, Jay-Z track. He's wearing Jesus piece. He, yep, from uh, Notorious wow, B.I.G. from Biggie. Now, aside from his, we've got Kanye's piece. piece okay. So Kanye's piece, original piece, was about the size of a grown man's hand. Oh my God. Okay, uh, it had clear diamonds for Jesus's crown, yellow and light brown diamonds for the hair, aquamarines for the blue eyes, and small rubies 
for the blood. You know, I I think I have I recall seeing this. Do you want to venture a guess how much the original one may have cost? That first one? 275,000. Uh no, let's not get crazy. Uh too high? Yeah, just a little. That was too high? Yeah. Um let's 125. Okay. So this one was a little bit lower. It was actually twenty five thousand no, dollars, which is still, lot. you know, which I mean, is still not lot. too bad. Um, so it was again uh, twenty five thousand dollars, and it was designed and made by this guy uh, Jacob Arabo. Now, Jacob Arabo, for reference, is basically a jeweler to the stars and everybody in between. Um, so, in fact, like he had made the twenty nineteen Miss World America crown, um, which was made with. 18K white gold finished with 164 carats of Colombian emeralds and 95 carats of diamonds. And he's mentioned in an incredible number of songs. So uh, when Kanye's talking or singing in uh, Touch the Sky, he's got the line, you know, I went to Jacob an hour after I got my advance. I just wanted to shine. That's who he's making reference to. Rick Ross, Live Fast, Die Young. (laughs) And we bout to hit Jacob the jewelry, uh, the jeweler, so I can be slick Rick and rule ya, Dr. Martin Lewis the King Jr. All right. Jr. And uh, Aesop Ferg uh, in the track Mazel Tov. This is the most. <laughs> <sighs> this is my favorite portion ever. Turning Jacob to a dentist. <laughs> so uh, referencing. What is turning Jacob to a dentist? Turning Jacob to a dentist. Gross. So, so Kanye had wound up actually creating another piece then in 2007, uh, which was designed by Takashi Murakami, who had also done the album work on graduation. So the dropout bear on the cover is wearing roughly the same piece that Kanye actually had made, and that piece is said to cost roughly $200,000. Two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, geez. Yeah. For the bear. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sure. Just for the bear. That's what I do when I have a bunch of money. I just, you know, get some for my absolutely for my, my giant stuffed bear. Absolutely. Because why not? Right. Because you're con Yeezy. Yeah. Because you're superfluous. Oh my god. Okay. So I'm gonna for my last <laughs> thing like an out of body <laughs> experience right now. For my last thing, I want them to move over to probably my probably my favorite piece of bling. Yeah. And it's the grill. You just alluded to it. Oh. Turning Jacob to a dentist. Oh. Right? <laughs> so, and I'm going to talk about him too. Slick Rick. Oh, okay. And and Nelly made grills and gold teeth, you know, very mainstream. Yeah. But to find out who really started grills, we have to go way, 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 way back to our good friends. The Egyptians. In 2500 BC, the ancient Egyptians. I don't know why. So an archaeologist uncovered a man buried in Giza. With two gold teeth in his mouth. After carbon dating, they found he lived around 2500 BC in Egypt. And they weren't the only ancient civilization to partake in this trend. Apparently, the people of the Mayan civilization wore jade grills. But they would put the gemstones directly into their teeth. So they would like hollow out a little... Oh, yeah, in, right in the front. And then stick a little gem in there. I actually think that sounds awesome. It's, oh, it's really cool. I, I think would never so- do it. I think that sounds cooler than, than actually like wearing a grill. I mean, it's like way more hardcore. Oh, like, I, gonna, think that, I think that's why I respect I'm gonna it so much I'm going to dig into more. my teeth and Absolutely. put gems. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So obviously this is like a, a status thing. Yeah. Right, as it, routinely it is. Um, but studies also show that this was a popular trend until about 1500s. So for a while, the Mayans were putting jade in their teeth. Yeah. And then also in the 16th century, there's evidence that the Philippines, in the Philippines, gold grills became popular. Huh. So it's been around for quite a while. That is pretty cool. I don't have any gold in my mouth. uh, No. At all. No. I don't know anybody. We don't have any cavities. No, that's right. Oh, so is that like the trade-off? We need to both get a cavity, and then we can go get gold caps. Well, let let me. Oh, I'm let sorry. Let me keep going. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. You actually, it's I like, mean, you segmented me perfectly into it. The worst thing, the worst way to run a so, podcast. So we're moving back to the U.S. Okay. Okay. So the rise of the the grill started in the '80s. About. Oh. Okay. So, it, and I'm not talking about the '80s now. I'm talking. You're gonna hear it. 
African immigrants evolved, involved in the transatlantic slave trade. Oh, I wouldn't call them immigrants. <laughs> no, definitely not. Slaves. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Much more PC. So I was going to say, wouldn't call them immigrants. So they were some of the first seen with gold in their teeth. Oh. Apparently, believe it or not, gold is one of the cheapest ways to fill a cavity. Oh, is it? In fact, it is. So during this time, impoverished Afri- African Americans could commonly be found with more than one gold tooth. Huh. During this time, native New Yorkers found this attractive. And then that's when they started to get custom sets of gold grills made for themselves. Oh, no way. And then fast forward until to the 80s, the rise of hip hop, hip hop in New York. And that's when like girls culture kind of, you know, took a, a surge to the top. Huh. And I think it's really cool to see how essentially this came from like, not that it came from, but it, it was considered like a poor or impoverished yeah. thing. And now whenever you see it, it's someone who's like upper echelon or, or yeah. very, very wealthy. You know, Of course. It's almost like the, and I think we've made reference to this in the past. It's almost like the, um, like the lobster complex, like how like now, like you go to a restaurant, well, like how like lobsters are bottom feeders, like in yeah. back in the, you know, back yeah. in the day, like lobsters were eaten by kind of, you know, leftover for like fishermen and they're you know, family because they were a plenty and they were bottom feeders. Like you didn't serve that. Didn't to know that the upper echelons. Oh yeah. Like it was well, one of those. We flip flopped. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, a couple other things here. Tell me. Um, well, one interesting thing, and then I'll, I'll get into the, some of the, uh, interesting stuff. Uh, you probably know this because I believe that you and I maybe used at least, uh, the initial, uh, Wikipedia, uh, for some of our, some of our research. Do you know who is the king of bling? Or who refers to themselves as the king of bling? No. Oh, no way. Evidently, it's Santa Claus. Oh, yeah? In the animated 1964 Rudolph and the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Santa claims to be the king of bling at around the six-minute mark. If you go and you watch the movie. Yeah. But he didn't mean... He didn't mean dripping in diamonds, though. No, I don't think so. But I think he was going for more of the bling, like effect. You know, okay. he does uh, have very white teeth. Yeah. So I did want to quickly, though, go ahead and, and touch on uh, just, you know, a little bit of naturally the controversial kind of like aspect, if you will, of bling. I love controversy. Right. Um, and there were two films in, pa- uh, in particular, two short films. One of them I had the chance actually to go ahead and watch. Um, so one is called Bling, Conse- uh, Consequences and Repercussions, and the other one is called Bling, A Planet Rock. So the first one, uh, Consequences and Repercussions, it's shot by Kareem Adoud and narrated by Chuck D from Public Enemy. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the film takes issue with how some of the diamonds used by ju- uh, jewelers to make such pieces are a lot of times like some of these blood diamonds. Um, which tend to fuel a lot of like social and political issues as well as lead to like widespread violence across the African continent. Um, and that's a real short one. It, it's uh, quite an old piece too. You can still find it on YouTube. It's maybe like 11 minutes. Oh, from, like, wow. 2003. Super short. Yeah. It's, it's, it was just kind of interesting considering the way that they were looking at the, in particular, um, some of the like, civil wars in Sierra Leone and how like that's a big place where diamond mining happens, but it really created this, you know, two tiered system and this, this whole, you know, kind of like how in China. Oh, very, very very, similar. Very, very much so. And then bling, uh, a planet rock follows, uh, Raekwon of Wu-Tang, Paul Wall and Tego Calderon, um, who's a, uh, like a famous, um, rapper and like reggaeton uh, artist um, as they go to as well Freetown in Sierra Leone to look at the 10 year civil war and see how it was impacted by uh, the diamond trade and mining um, and and like I said I did, just wanted to at least acknowledge like dude it is it is amazing that um these metals and these these things coming from the ground are still yeah. so too valued 
Oh, it's just that the number of, I can't tell you how many severed limbs I saw in such a short period Damn. of time. Like the amount of people who are behanded as a result right. of this. And, and it's cra- an cra- it's crazy, crazy, yep. crazy. Uh, so it should at least be noted that like, while they're beautiful and, and the whole nine yards, like maybe they're, you know, maybe, maybe like one per person's good. I mean, they're essentially worthless. Like let's let's be real. Well, it's funny because I was just thinking in that moment, like, okay, we still put a value on this thing, and yet you and I have actively discuss, discussed something like, uh, like cryptocurrency. Like, oh, it's got value because we believe it has value. Same thing. Same thing. However, the mining obviously is very very different. So, right. like, why bother with you know cutting off limbs for for a ruby? I mean, I totally agree. But people, you know, want their money and also are ruthless. I, I say we're not as ruthless. No, we're not. I, I say I say you know take some of the old stuff and and melt it down or reuse I it. Couldn't agree with you more. So while you were chatting, I took it upon myself to look up some of the most expensive bling. Oh, and most of these are uh, donned by actresses. Oh. Actually, all of them are. Um, this this list is from E Online, and it's the most expensive bling in award show history. Ooh. So it's only you know like I guess Oscars or. Um, Golden Globes or Emmys, what Tony's, have you? Yeah, yeah VMAs. Exactly. exactly. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the top of the list, and when I say that, I mean the bottom. Okay. And this one is uh, just a Cameron Diaz wore a one million dollar Tiffany and Co diamond necklace to the 2012 Academy Awards, and that bitch hasn't given it back yet. Probably not. They probably actually just gifted it to her. Um, and then you know it goes on. Gwyneth Paltrow, this lady. Who That's I at the know. bottom of the list. Yeah, million dollars. Yeah. The, the, the first two. Um, this lady who I don't know. We have Amy Adams wore a um, a Cartier platinum and diamond emerald. I don't know that word. Uh, Joe Allaire. Joe jo Allaire. Yeah. Jo- yeah, that's the, the French word for uh, for jeweler. Okay. Okay. Uh, this The bracelet featured a 30.75 carat carved emerald Oof. and also 575 diamonds. But wait, there's there's much more. Oh, good. I was hoping because I was going to say that's lacking. We're going to go right past um, Angelina Jolie's 2.5 million 115 carat emerald drop earrings, and also we're going to blow by Kate Winslet's 2.5 million Tiffany and Co necklace. Oh my god! And we're going to go right to the big hitters. So Nicole Kidman wore this seven million dollar Lorenz Scott custom necklace. It honestly I mean, looks it, like the, you know, the icicles, the fake yes. icicles that you hang up. I was going to say, I mean, it's, I don't like, I don't think it's very, I don't like that. I was going to say, I don't think it's a very attractive It doesn't like piece. fall nicely. I got to say, and I, wow, this is such an odd episode. I think it's also because the fact is that I wouldn't want her to have such a plunging neckline with it. Like, I feel like there's, she's it so fair skinned. There needs to be a high skin- neck dress. Yeah, that. she's so fair skinned where the That's diamonds true. almost blend in with her, her porcelain skin. <laughs> So that was $7 million. Holy shit. She wore that to the uh, 2008 Academy Awards. The necklace took, uh, I'm sorry, the necklace features 7,645 diamonds and totaled 1,400 carats. It took a reported 6,200 hours to handcraft. Oh my God. Yeah, pretty insane. Uh, We have this, she's one of my favorites, Anne Hathaway, uh, wore a $10 million 94 carat Tiffany & Co. Lucida Star Diamond necklace to the 2011 academy awards not nearly as like austin yeah, cumbersome and, yeah, as Nicole yeah. i mean it's pretty but it's still very plain then at that point i think for that that oh, price gloria stewart wore a 20 million dollar 15 carat blue diamond necklace is that oh, the, is that the one the, from uh, the... titanic yeah okay, okay. That, i mean that is beautiful that makes sense then and then last but not least we have the top of the list carrie underwood Wins the most expensive bling award. Carrie Underwood? For her $31 million diamond necklace designed by Jonathan Art. She wore it to the 2013 Grammys. The necklace featured a whopping 381 carats of oval pair, marquee, and round brilliant white diamonds. That is That's beautiful. A nice, that is a nice beautiful one. necklace. Although, uh, again, and just, just this yin and this yang. Mm-hmm. If you're going to wear a $31 million diamond necklace, sure. don't let your kid paint your fucking fingernails Agreed. before you go ahead and then walk down the road. Is runway. that what happened? I don't Does know, but like that's it? exactly what it looks like. Why the the one odd like brown, brown. beige in the red 
Like, you know what? This is what happens when we let someone like her go ahead and be Fräulein Maria in the live stage version then of Sound of Music. Everybody's going around talking Fräulein Maria, and then you got her coming in here and going, but well, Mr. Von Trapp. But Mr. Von Trapp, so, the Nazis are coming. So I didn't actually see that, but now I feel like I have to just oh to hear my God. her. I, I, I put it on at one point, and it was very, Fräulein Maria, we love the way you sing us another one. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. I was like, turn it off. Turn I mean, it off. She's, she's a singer, not an actress, I guess, right? Yeah, but I guess it's just one of those. Th- true. And I'll give right? you the, you are 100% correct. Then don't but cast still, her. Right, who cares? Then, Julie then Andrews, that's who we need to yell Yeah, at. Julie Andrews is not dead, okay? That bitch saw that happen on live national television. She was television. probably very unhappy. I hope she was. Or hysterical laughing oh god wow that really just i don't know where that all came from i just blacked out what were we talking about <laughs> i'm not sure anymore we've been all over the place all over it's the place it's been great it's been a good episode it's been great this has been a good one yeah. i'm a fan i'm a fan a fan of the fan fan of the fan yeah Woo. you okay yeah i think i'm doing all right all right i'm excited <laughs> me too i'm what? excited but because obviously this is dropping on friday yep. So like my wedding day, your wedding day, big deal. We're talking about bling. I think it's gonna be great. Gonna you're be gonna, wearing a ring. You're gonna be sporting a, a new piece of bling for the rest of your life. Well, one, well, one of them silicone, so you know. Oh, all just right. in case the, the metal ones get too oh, heavy. Oh, okay. All right. Can I wish just we're 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 looking forward to this. This is gonna be a great event, though. I'm. We're both very excited. Um, can't wait to spend the day with family and friends and well, from all the people we care about from the beers and. Uh, community. I'm going to speak on behalf. Is that okay? I'm going to speak on behalf. Right. Behalf of all five people. Behalf of <laughs> behalf. Of, shut up there. You're five people too. <laughs> we wish you many, many happy years of love and bliss and booze. Hopefully, as many as the margaritas that I consume on the night of my wedding. This is going to be a lovely affair. Uh, and if we don't see you for uh, for Tuesdays, you'll know why. It, you'll know exactly yeah. why. So, but we'll probably see you anyway. Exactly. So have a great weekend. And uh, have fun at my wedding if you're coming. And if you're not, then uh, go step on a Lego or something. (laughs) Goodbye. So aggressive.